Felix or Moisef Igebo. I'm the principal consultant of Universal Educational Consultants Nigeria, as well as the editor and publisher of Community News Network, CN News, based uh, here in Lagos. I'm also the author of the document I titled Strategy to Resolve the Persistent Social Cultural Sociopolitical Religious Unrest in Nigeria, an approach based initiative on the implementation strategy for the national conference that uh, the federal government is currently looking into. All right, so uh, we heard that there is something happening between you and some persons in power currently. Can you explain to us uh, your connection? with the, those that are working with the national conference, uh, especially the Presidential Advisory Committee on National Conference? All right, uh, very briefly, I'll just do uh, a synopsis of what actually happened. It all began in 2001, when I, the Lord um, inspired me with this document on uh, the implementation strategy for the national conference. Uh, then it was the former president, Olusek Obasanjo, that was in power. I went to Abuja then and presented the uh, document to them. Of course, they responded much later. I got a letter from the office of the political advisor uh, to the president, Chief Chukwemeka Ezife, acknowledging this uh, idea to be germane and to be an idea that will work for Nigeria. He acknowledged this document to be an idea that will work for this nation. After Chief Ezefe's um, intervention, of course, his intervention was not um, uh, too successful because it's like the president then had ulterior motives. And then um, later on, I think they came up with the Constitutional Review Conference in 2005, and uh, that rubbished the whole essence of what I came up with. Also, I have a letter from the office of the SGF, uh, Secretary of the Federation, Government of the Federation, as at that time, that was in 2004, Chief Ufo Tekaite, also acknowledging this document and asking me to forward it to the National Assembly uh, as they put a um, motion in gear for the Constitution review. Now, after all this, you know, time elapsed and I had to go ahead to, uh, you know, update the document. Actually, the implementation strategy has to do with how the conference can be organized in a seamless way. Um, like I said, this is an idea the Lord breathed to me. And it took me time to actually put all these things together. And I've been working on this document for about 12 good years. So uh, in January this year, you know, I was moved again by the Spirit of God, I believe, to go ahead and put this uh, document across to the president. Seeing the way the whole nation was going, the whole, you know, the crisis all over the place, Boko Haram, religious crisis here and there, uh, ethnic um, um, militia here and there, you know, working against the interest of the federal government. When I saw what was going on and the prediction of the American government that Nigeria would definitely break up before 2015, precisely in 2014, that Nigeria would definitely break up. When I saw all those things, I said, well, the way to go about this thing is to give the president a document that he knows he can rely on. Prior to this time, Nigerians are aware that the president never, never accepted the idea of this national conference. He was always against it. He spoke against it. He acted against it, and he did not accept it. But I went ahead to Bayesa State in January this year, and I met with a former commissioner in Bayesa State by name, uh, Pastor Mrs. Jane Alec. And I spoke to her, and I told her this is what I wanted to do. I wanted because I knew this uh, woman for some time. We attend the same church, and um, I, I felt she could be uh, someone that would help me to pass this document across to the president, because I didn't want to go through the bureaucracy again, knowing that the bureaucracy would def definitely take a long time to, uh, for the document to get across to the president. So I needed somebody that could, uh, you know, uh, give this document to the president, so that the president can look at it, and um, you know, impassionately and they see to the implementation of the document. So I, I, I spoke to the lady, and um, the 
lady told me that she would not be she could not see the president she, she doesn't have direct access to the president but that um chief ek clark edwin clark had access you know to the president and that he has the president's ears so she advised that i should take the document and see chief ek clark which of course um i eventually did uh there is another man that i also saw there because we i went with one of my uh a church member who took me to uh uh, Mr. Norseman Isaac, who is also an aide of the Baisa State Governor uh, on political and sorry on religious affairs, so I I saw Mr. Norseman and Mr. Norseman also advised that I took the document to Chief Ike Clark, that is the one that can have direct access to the uh, president. I have the text message from um, uh, Pastor Mrs. Jane Alec acknowledging that she actually asked me to go and give that document uh, to uh, Chief Edwin Clark. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I was able to meet with uh, Chief Clark in Abuja in February. I think precisely February 21st. We would like to make something very clear before you proceed. Like you okay. said the Mrs. Alec actually yes. was a commissioner. Yes, under President Goodluck Jonathan, when he was president in Bayesa State. Uh, when he was uh, the governor of Bayesa State. Okay, so let's proceed. And uh, you met and uh, you went ahead to see uh, Chief Clark. Yes, I, I met with Chief Ike Clark. Precisely on the 22nd, I think, 22nd of February this year. And uh, when we met, I explained the whole thing to him that the idea of the conference is to, you know, uh, see how Nigeria can move forward. You know, uh, we all know what the National Conference is all about. But I think the problem that Nigerians, or rather the leaders, have been having is organization. How can this conference be organized? How can this conference be, uh, be held in a way that will not lead to the breakup of Nigeria. That is what the essence of the whole conference is all about. The, that is the problem that the leaders have been facing. How do they organize this conference in such a way that I do not? And that is what I have here in this document. How it can be organized seamlessly without uh, Nigeria breaking up. And this is exactly a copy of the document I made available to Chief E.K. Clark. This is the document I handed over to him on the 22nd of February 2013, this year. And having handed, this, uh, handed over this document to him, he told me to come back in two weeks. But one thing he kept on asking me when I gave the document to him was, who is your father? He kept on asking me again and again, who is your father? Who is your father in Nigeria? I told him my father was late, and my father was um, a peasant farmer. And so he kept on asking me. I said, okay, when I now told him my father was a peasant farmer, he said, okay, okay, okay. I never knew that what he meant was, uh, you know, to eventually take this thing from me and maybe furnish it to the, to the president, give it to the president and all that. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, cut me off from the whole thing entirely, which eventually he did. So eventually after asking me who was my father and all that, I told him what my, who my father was and all that. He told me to come back in two weeks. When I went back in two weeks, he refused to see me. He just said he was not going to see me. All my efforts to see him, all my efforts to reach him, everything proved abortive. He just refused to see me. I came back to, in fact, he was coming to Lagos for his wedding in that match, uh, I think towards match ending. He came to Lagos to wed, for a wedding, and then I, I was there in his house at Apapa. I went to his house at Apapa, and uh, he dressed, number 20, he dressed at Apapa here. He told me, I went there, uh, his house at Abuja is number 45. So I went to his house at Apapa in Lagos here, and he said um, he doesn't want to see me. He told the security man, the SSS following him and all that, he doesn't want to see me, and he doesn't know me and all that. I told them to tell him, the man who brought this document on the national conference is the one, he said he doesn't want to see me, he doesn't know anybody like that, I don't know, I know that. So at the end of the day, he refused to see me. I told the PA, David, I told him, okay, let me have my document if you are not interested in seeing me. I have co copies of the text messages I kept on sending and sending and sending and sending and sending, forwarding and forwarding to both the phone of Chief Edwin Clark and his PA, David. I demanded a request for my, for my document. All right, if you know you are not interested or you don't know me or you don't want to see me, let me have the document. He refused to give me, hand over the document. They told me they will, I should call back after the Easter break. After the Easter period, I called, I sent messages, they refused to pick my calls. And sometimes in August, when I called, David said the chief wanted to talk to me, that he was ready to talk to me now, that he was on another phone, I should hold on. I waited, I hold, held on, I waited, till the following day, no calls. Then I called. When I called back, he didn't pick. All my effort again, text messages and everything, till today, they refused to pick my calls or to 
attend to my text messages. So that's how, until in September, when uh, the, the Senate president was going to inaugurate the new session for, of the National Assembly, he said uh, the Senate was disposed to the idea, or the House of Assembly was disposed to the idea of the, of the National Conference. I was surprised. On the 1st of October, the president announced the, that uh, he was now ready for the National Conference. And I put two, one and two together. Why is the president now interested in this idea? Why did sudden change? If you do not see a blueprint that he knows is workable, I believe it because he saw a blueprint that he knows is workable. That is why he now accepted the idea for this conference. And you think it is your own blueprint? That I believe it in my document because one of the statements, after inaugurating that committee, there was something he said which Nigerians should take note of. He said at the end of the day, the resolutions and all the standpoints from the uh, conference Will be done. Will be given to uh, 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 presented to the National Assembly for onward deliberation and adoption, and that is directly from this document. Because what the other proponents of the National Conference came up with, which I am aware of, the ones I am aware of, Chief Wabwezi wanted the decree establishing the 1999 Constitution to be abrogated. He, he, I am aware that he gave five models to the president, to the government, on how this conference can be uh, can be implemented, but. His idea is the decree establishing the conference, um, establishing the uh, 1999 constitution should be abrogated so that sovereignty can come on the conference. That means the president loses his power, the National Assembly loses, loses their power, and sovereignty comes on the conference. And that is not what I have in this document. Okay, when I went at first, it took so many years. You can see the letter I forwarded to them. This is one of the letters I forwarded in 2002. This is from my own company. Now, this is a copy of the letter with the stamp of the federal government on it. I forwarded this letter in 2002. The first letter, I started the, the, the journey in 2001. The first letter that the president wrote to me to acknowledge the document at all was in 2004. What I started in 2001, almost three years later before they now responded with a letter. That is the, the problem of bureaucracy, putting these things through the bureaucracy. I felt the, 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 the urgency of the, of the issues at hand and the troubles that the, the president is facing and the government is facing demanded that we don't I don't go through that same route again. If I have to go through that same route, that means I have to wait for another maybe two, three years for it to pass through the bureaucracy and all that. They invited me, of course, to the presidency. They invited me as, uh, to the presidency. I think that was in 2003 before when they invited me. So since they, were, they invited you that time, yes. what happened to that clouds? I mean, it could be faster now that they already know you. Maybe if you went through the same clouds now, maybe it would be faster and all that. Of course, right. of course. If I, you, the government in place then was already out. And if I'm going to do anything, I have to start all over again. With the new government. With the new, government. With the new, so, administration. With the new administration. That is why I felt it would be more convenient if I have someone who can discreetly hand it over to the president. Okay. So that uh, when the president looks at it and he knows that the idea is truly, truly workable, I want Nigerians to see it. I want Nigerians to see everything in this document. It's an inspiration from God. I know, I'm not saying that it's my brain or I'm the one that, I, that I'm so wise or I'm wiser than all Nigerians. No. So after you but this is an inspiration from God. After you saw that the documents you, you founded or that you generated is what they are working with, according to what you suspected, what effort, uh, what step have you taken to make to contact president or anybody to say, okay, this is my document to work in? Have you made any step? Like that? I went to Abuja just this last week. I was in Abuja, and um, this this October, this just a few a few days back, I was in Abuja. I tried to uh, meet with the SGF himself. I wanted to meet with the secretary to the government of the federation. I met with the media assistant, uh, that the SA media, and I told him I wanted to meet with the SGF on this matter. Because I felt, you know, this is an injustice to cut me off completely and for the chief to take, um, the way it is now, it's like he wants to take the glory, he wants to take the credit for, what, for this job. Because the president definitely got something that made him to make a U-turn. He got a blueprint that made him to make a U-turn. 
So from if the president did not get a blueprint, he will definitely continue to say no to the national conference. So from your meeting with uh, those top officials, did you confirm that what they are working with is a document? When I intimated them, the when I, I, I spoke to the uh, essay to the uh, essay on media to the SGM, he looked through the document. He did not deny that this document is what they are working on, working with. He only said, eh, whatever happened is between me and Chief Edwin Clark. Therefore, eh, well, whatever I want to do now, I should go and reconsider. I should go and think. You are simply alleging that what uh, Honorable, let me say Honorable Okonomu is currently leading is already, is something that was already pre-structured. It's not as if they are actually coming up. It is pre-structured. The modalities that they are talking about, it will definitely be what I have here. I do not believe they are, they are going to come up with anything too different from here. Let it be published, let Nigerians see it. Let them come up, up with their own report and let us see, let us compare the two. So if it is say, not, so if it is not, then then it means it means that the president got so the so blueprint from some if, from if some, another source. If you if you if what you are showing to us now is what they eventually come up with, it simply means what you're saying is that all the ethnic nationalities are coming to different forums to discuss and all that blah blah blah. They are only wasting their time. There's something already that the government is coming up with. Is that are we wasting our time? If you are there is no waste of time. Right? There's no waste of time. Whatever those people are going to come up with is going to be an additions. This document in itself cannot be 100 uh, percent total. That this is what it must be. Whatever. But this is just like a roadmap, a guide, a roadmap on how it can be implemented effectively without. Nigeria breaking up without us having, you know, issues with the uh, conference. Uh, without the president also leaving office. Without the president leaving office, without the National Assembly being affected. This is the document. Mm. Okay. It is one thing to, to be fulfilled. It is something, it is one thing to, to say uh, uh, the, the, the idea has come out to the limelight. But it's another thing for Nigerians to know where it is coming from. I took, it took me 12 years. To work on this from the ad, from the background it cost me money and i took risks going to abuja again and again and again and again the government did not pay me one cobble all this while i've been all through the time that they sent me all this letter and everything they did not give me one cobble i've put 12 years of my life on this matter and at the end of the day there was somebody who will not take the credit for it i don't think it's right i think it's injustice I believe it is a case of plagiarism. But let, I want, you know, my, my, my own is, I gave this to Chief E.K. Clark to hand over to the president. Eventually, he cut me off. And then the president came up with it. Before, uh, Professor Ben Wangweze came up with his own uh, suggestions and whatever, his documents, around August, if I'm not mistaken. I gave this to Chief Clark on the 22nd of February. So they must have been, and of course, if they were looking at if what Chief Mwabwezi um, brought to them was what they really are trying to work on, I'm sure they would not uh, make him. They would not make him a member of that committee. They would have made him the chairman of that committee. But of course, what he said is he wanted the decree establishing the 1999. He wanted sovereignty on the conference. He wants sovereignty on the conference. But your document doesn't provide that. No, 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 no. And I told you, the president quoted from here that at the end of the day, he preempted the committee. If he doesn't have this document, why did he preempt the committee? Why did he wait for the committee to come out, to say, to come up with their recommendation that uh -huh, at the end of the day, the whatever they are going to come up with at the conference will be submitted to the National Assembly? Why didn't he wait? Why did he preempt the committee? So if he preempted the committee because he saw it here. That's my belief. I believe he saw it here. That is why he preempted the committee to say, you know, it, it, it generated a media forum. Everyone was saying, ah, why, why, why would you come? Why would you preempt that committee? The committee was supposed to come up with the recommendation. But he said, eh, at the end of the day, everything that would be said would be. And then it became a media, a media uh, issue. So why how did he now come up with that if he didn't have, if he didn't have a document that he, he knew very well that this is what will be at the end of the day? It, it is because he has a document and this what he said is right here. So if, if the structures and the modality. The SGF office said they, they, they should work on. Everything is here. I believe he wants to take credit for it. That is why he just cut me off completely. So that I will not, I will not make any noise that nobody will know anything. And, and uh, maybe if I talk, he will now know what to do with me. Because that's what I, 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 I learned, you know, clandestinely that uh, he has a, a, a squad. And I'm afraid for my life, even as I'm talking now. 
But then I must say the truth. Let the truth come out. Let Nigerians know where this thing originated from. What gave the president the confidence to say, okay, he's ready for the conference? There is something. There is a blueprint. He quoted from the blueprint. He quoted from the blueprint. There is a blueprint. He could not have just accepted that the conference should hold in, without uh, whatever people have been coming up with when he knows very well that ah, this model they are saying, they are talking of sovereign, 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 sovereign. He can only accept the document that does not go for sovereign. And that's, that's all. I want the, 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 the public to know where the source, of, what the, where the source of this document for future references and for future purposes. And I have all evidence to show that I gave this document to Chief E.K. Clark. Even though he did not sign for me because I gave it to him as an elder statesman, I gave it to him with respect, I gave it to, gave it to him because I believe so much in him, and he, I did not ask him to, to, to sign any document for me. But there are people that sent me to him. I have their text message here too. There are people that sent me to him. Go and meet him. He's the one that can reach the president for you. He called those people too. When I went, got to him, he called them to confirm from them. Even if, but I believe those people cannot lie. They are aware. When I went to him, they are aware. And I believe they cannot lie. If they have to be called to question, I believe they will come out to say yes. They are aware.